All right, everyone, it's time to talk about the banning of red ice by YouTube, which, by the way, first, just to state, I do oppose. Um, I don't want anyone banned off the platform for non-criminal behavior. Or, uh, if it's spam or slander or, you know, porn or something like that, okay. But, you know, I, I don't really have a problem with any form of political commentary that's not advocating violence. I've never heard red ice advocate violence. It just doesn't happen. Supposedly, they violate an egregious violation of the hate speech policy. I'm going to get into why that sort of policy is a bad idea to even have. And by the way, the reasons may astound you. So I'm going to get into that in this video too. But uh, pinned comment as well as a link in the description to their BitChute account. You should have a BitChute account. If you don't, you're nuts at this point if you make videos at all. Or if you like any video creator on YouTube or any other video platform. Uh, so they've been banned for my hate speech and, and I oppose that. Um, I oppose it on multiple levels. First and foremost, it's not just somebody telling them that they're not allowed to have an opinion. It's also telling me that I'm not allowed to interact with that content, at least on YouTube as a platform. When somebody is banned, what the tech firm is saying, what the billionaires there are saying is that you're not allowed to interact with that content. Literally everybody in the world is being censored from an opinion when one person is silenced. When a person in some, in some other country is stoned to death because they blaspheme some dead prophet, it robs everybody else in the world of the opportunity to hear their voice, to hear their concerns or their ideas. You know, the next Copernicus could have already been dropped into a well and drowned to death for violating some medieval holy law somewhere in some godforsaken wasteland in the world. We've got to keep that in mind. Number two, and this is the biggest reason I'm against all forms of tech censorship. Beyond, It goes beyond ethics. It goes beyond even pragmatism in the tech sense. This is something I'm about to say, nobody's talking about this, but everybody should be thinking about this. You are insane if you don't. Right now, these tech firms are censoring material based largely on the opinions held in, in the Western world, in the US, Canada, Western Europe, Australia, a little bit in Japan maybe. That's where the censorship is coming from. As other parts of the world are more and more and more in tune to the internet, China eventually will break free of its intranet to some degree as well. Is it not conceivable that the norms and hate speech, again, in quotations, so-called policies of these other countries will begin to seep into U.S. firms through money? What did we just see with China? Chinese communists decide, we're going to pressure the NBA and all of these other groups, and Blizzard, to abuse their users, to abuse their fans over this Hong Kong issue. We're going to exert some pressure. They do it reluctantly, but we're going to exert pressure on U.S.-based firms and businesses to censor people, Apple and all of these other groups. And they did. They did it without complaint. Blizzard half-asses it, other than South Park, who was standing against them, a bunch of independent content creators, using sites that are easily bought into by Chinese and Saudi and other investors. What's to say, years from now, as these groups become more wealthy, more powerful, and more keyed into the Western internet, now that Obama gave I uh, ICANN away, Let's say China buys into Facebook or Twitter or something. Lots of money starts flowing in. Will those sites not potentially be pressured to at least silently police users algorithmically? You can do this without anybody knowing, as YouTube did for years, uh, to silence dissent against Chinese state policy, to convince people that some island somewhere is legitimately Chinese. What about Saudi investors? Can they not lean on one of these sites to say, hey, there's a lot of Islamophobia on your site. And by the way, your definition isn't broad enough. Any criticism of Islam is Islamophobia. What is Islamophobia? Islamophobia is a buzz term for a non-existent facet. Basically, you criticized this religion too much. You, basic, you criticized a dead dude or a book too much. That's essentially what it is. These same people who endorse the term love burning books, just not that one, because it happened to be written in the right part of the world that you're not allowed to criticize. What happens if the state, uh, your argument here for your leftists, the leftists that are so up in arms about Israeli policy in Palestine, what if Israel buys into a U.S. tech firm and says, well, you know, criticism of Israel is uh, anti-Semitism. You're not allowed to do that anymore on YouTube. No criticism of Netanyahu allowed because he's protecting the chosen people or something. The argument's not that far out there. We're already, so China's already making this sort of argument. Well, you have free speech says China, but there are certain things that you're not allowed to say because of public safety or whatever. Is this not the same as the, the hate speech arguments being made here? It's the same as the Chinese social credit system already anyway that's been imposed on a site like Facebook. It's the same thing. 
We've even got the differentiation of individuals who once were totally equal in their content creation into tiers, the priority creators, the verified partnered creators, and the little people. You've even got a caste system. So if a bunch of, uh, of Indian investors buy into a US tech firm and say, start censoring people, that, that say bad things about Nahendra Modi. Start, start anyone who criticizes Hinduism. Somebody criticized Indian state policy. Someone was pro-Pakistan. They said Pakistan is, Kashmir is Pakistan. That's not allowed. It's Hindu phobia. This is going to get messy over the next few years. And it's going to because, be because U.S. tech firms delved into censorship and opened that door. We should put the genie back in the bottle. These tech firms always could have stood up to societal conventions and said, look, what do you expect us to do? We're platforms. This is a video hosting site. People make videos. If you feel it's oppressive, if you don't like it, why don't you debate the person or ignore them? Or if it's legitimately illegal, if it legitimately makes you credibly afraid, it's terroristic, it's, it's a slander and they're going after your career, then you can file a police report or use our handy dandy reporting tool. Otherwise, you can block them. They don't get to interact with your content anymore and you don't need to interact with theirs. Fucking ignore them. Grow the fuck up. That would be so much better than opening the door to China or Saudi Arabia or, God forbid, leftists, Russia, trying to impose rules on U.S. users through U.S. tech firms through economic pressure. It will happen. In some of these cases, we have seen, for example, uh, what user was it? Was it Tommy Robinson or some of these other users within the U.K.? We saw the U.K.'s own government, I think the whip of the Labour Party or whatever it was, if I remember correctly, was pressuring Twitter and Facebook and some of these other groups to ban Tommy Robinson and some of these other users from their platforms. A person at the time, by the way, running for office in an accredited, legitimate political party. That doesn't make sense. Why are we allowing this to happen? It doesn't make sense. We're, we're basically saying to billionaires, please abuse us more because we trust your judgment more than our fellow man. Some randomly selected person, we weigh them as, as less trustworthy because you have more in your bank account. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense, and it's certainly not a leftist argument, and yet I hear nothing but leftists usually making it. Very interesting. So I oppose the banning of Red Ice. I oppose the banning of everybody. And by the way, there will be a lot of people they are too afraid to defend a group like Red Ice. Oh, I can't defend them because they got labeled Nazis by BuzzFeed. I don't give a fuck who they got, what they got labeled as. I'll defend them anyway. Always going to happen. There will be people on the left who complain, Ooh, this because Styx is a secret Nazi himself. Fuck you. Just fuck off. All you do is you love censorship. You love book burning. If anyone's going to be jackbooting down the street, it's going to be you, not me. That's about all. Peace out.